this is Tamara from Moogliblog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to make the Houndstooth Squares Blanket. This is a free pattern that you'll find on Moogliblog.com. There is a link in the description, and please go to that link to get the written pattern as well as the pixel chart that I will be referring to throughout this video, and links to the yarn, hooks, and everything else you'll see here today. For this pattern, we'll be using Red Heart Comfort Chunky, and a US MN 9mm hook. This one is a Clover Amore. Let's get started. Now, Red Heart Comfort Chunky comes in these great big skeins, and that's fantastic, but for this pattern, we're going to be working tapestry style, so it's a little bit easier to use work with smaller skeins. To make the pattern as written, you'll need four skeins of this total, two each in two different colors, or I suppose you could mix it up if you wanted to, but that's what I used. So what I did to make it a little easier, because you'll be working with up to four balls of yarn at once, is I broke down these big balls using my yarn winder into some smaller balls. You could also wind these by hand if you wanted to. I just made a couple, two, three cakes out of each one of these big ones, and it made it that much easier to actually crochet the blanket. So with that said, let's go ahead and demonstrate how this pattern actually comes together. What I have in front of me here is the pixel chart that I actually wrote out to design this pattern. You can see I've got a grid of 12 squares by 12 squares right here. And you'll find this on the blog post linked in the video description. So be sure to go and take a look at this for yourself and make sure if you print out the pattern to print this part out as well. Each one of these little squares represents three extended double crochets with three single crochets worked into the top. And that's explained a little bit more in the written pattern as well and will be demonstrated here in a few minutes. Basically, this is the basic repeat for the pattern. It doesn't look anything like houndstooth I know right now, but when you put these squares together, you add some more on the sides and above and below, then the houndstooth uh, pattern really does become apparent. So when we make our blanket, what we do is we work this repeat three times in a strip. So after you'd make this row right here, you'd work this row again. So, or I should say pair of rows, since this represents two rows across. So since there's three stitches in each of these blocks across, that means it's 36 stitches across, and two rows in each of these blocks, that means it's 24 rows. And that's our basic repeat. So for the pattern as written on the post, unless you're changing the size, you make three strips with three of these repeats. And I'll show those to you two here in a minute. So let's go ahead and start our first strip together. I'm going to start with a row of foundation extended double crochets. If you haven't worked foundation stitches before or extended double crochets before, I do have separate tutorials for those on the Moogly Blog YouTube channel. So let's go ahead and work our few, first few together uh, since we're combining these two techniques into a new stitch. I'm going to start, I've got the slip knot on my hook and I'm going to chain three. One, two, and three. And those three chains do not count as a stitch. Those are going to be pure turning chains. So when you're counting your stitches at the end of the row, do not count those. Then we're going to yarn over, and I like to go into the back humps of my chains, just a personal preference. I think it gives a really nice, since it's gonna be the side of our blanket, a really nice edge. So I'm going to go right on into that back hump of the chain. That's the first chain we made, the one furthest from the hook and I will pull up one loop. And that loop right there is going to be the base, sort of act as the chain for our first foundation extended double crochet. Then I'm going to begin the actual stitch. I'll yarn over and pull through the first loop to make that first loop for our extended double crochet. And then the way to make an extended double crochet is you yarn over, pull through just the first loop like that, and then you yarn over and pull through two, and then pull through two like so to finish it just like a normal double crochet. So it's just that little bit taller than a standard double crochet because of that first pull through one at the very beginning. Now to make future foundation extended double crochets, we yarn over, we go under the two loops at the bottom of the previous stitch. Remember those are the two I talked about would act as our chain. So it's kind of like working back into the chain there. We pull up one loop. That's the chain for the bottom of our second stitch here. Yarn over, pull through one to begin our extended double crochet. Yarn over, pull through one. Yarn over, pull through two. And yarn over and pull through two. And that finishes our second one. Because remember, those three right there aren't going to count as a stitch. So if you need to, you can put a stitch marker right in the top of that first foundation extended double crochet just to help you with counting your stitches. 
Now, from there, when we looked at those charts, you'll remember I talked about how each one of those blocks represents three extended double crochet stitches as well as three single crochet stitches worked into the top. So when we look at our chart, we can see we've got our first six blocks in white. So that means there's going to be 18 of these stitches. So I've got three there and I've got 15 more to go before I switch colors. So I'm going to just keep making my foundation extended half double, or excuse me, extended double crochets until I've got 18 of them and then I'll show you how I switch colors right in the middle of this first row. Okay, so here I have 18 foundation extended double crochets, and you can see they're all ready to go here, and it's time, if we go back and look at that chart, which hopefully you've printed out or you've got open in another window here, you can see it's time to add our next color, and we're going to have uh, be nine stitches in the gray, or whatever you're using for your color B. So when I go, it's time to switch colors, what I wanna actually do is leave the last two loops of the previous stitch on the hook there and I'm going to yarn over with the new color and pull that through and I want to make sure to leave a good tail there so I don't accidentally pull it out later and it, that'll give me a nice end to weave in later too so then I get that out of the way here I'm going to yarn over with the gray and then I'm just going to go ahead and finish the stitch as I normally would if I just kept working with the white I'll go into the bottom pull up that chain loop Pull through to start the stitch, pull up a little more yarn, pull through one to start our extended double crochet, pull through two, and pull through two. It can see that gives us a really nice clean color change right there on the very first row. And that's one of the reasons that I went ahead and used foundation stitches for this first row. If you really wanted to, you could absolutely just make a long, long chain in one of your colors and then work back across in the indicated colors according to the chart. If that's what you prefer, you don't like the foundation stitches, that's up to you. But I really like this for a really nice clean color change and just a great way to get this pattern started. So as I'm working across here, I've got three of the gray ones made already and that's our first block. And in that first row, if you look at the chart, you'll see we need three blocks of gray, so that's nine stitches total. So I will see you when I've got just a few more of these made. Okay, so I've got nine stitches almost finished. I went ahead and stopped with two loops left on the hook. And I wanna show you real quick and in back, here's my starting end for the gray, but the white end for that first bobbin I've got going here, that first cake of yarn, it's still attached. And I'm just gonna let this hang out back here until I'm ready to pick it up again in the next row. So that means, since I'm switching back to white for another nine stitches to finish off row one, I'm going to need a second bobbin of white, and that's where that comes in handy. Like I said, since this pattern uses two big balls of that yarn, you could work straight from those four balls if you wanted to, but I just find that a little bit easier. So we're gonna do the same thing again. We'll yarn over with the new color, pull it through, find that drop, drop that end there. We'll weave that in later. Yarn over, find the bottom of the previous stitch, and just start working right in there. So like I said, there are 36 stitches in each one of these rows. So that makes it relatively easy to always keep track. You don't have to worry about adding or taking away stitches for each row. It's just gonna be a matter of color changes primarily. So I'm going to demonstrate soon here some of the different ways we can do the color changes while keeping our bobbins attached for as long as possible and minimizing as much as possible the ends that we'll need to weave in later. So I will see you right when I get to the end of row one. Okay, so now I've got 36 stitches made for row one. You can kind of see it all on screen there. We've got a nice clean color change. And one thing I wanted to show you really quick is when I changed colors there, this loop starting to want to pull out a little bit. Not a problem. I can just give that a little tug till it's the same size as the other V's to work into. So if you wanted to, you could weave in those ends now, crochet over them a little bit in this next row to secure them. That's up to you. But since this is an end, it's fine. I just want to show the gray end is still waiting there for me. So let's begin row two together. Row two, super easy. The second row, in fact, the even numbered rows are always super easy because we're just going to follow the pattern of the previous row with single crochets. So we chain one and turn to work back the other way. And if you want to rearrange your bobbins at this point, you can. I just like to flip mine back and forth as much as possible to minimize tangling. 
Um, you can use whatever method works best for you. So we're just going to work single crochets right back in to the same color stitches. So that means anytime I've got my color A stitch that I'm working into with a single crochet, it'll be color A yarn. Anytime I'm working into a color B stitch, it'll be color B yarn. And our color changes are going to be very similar. So let me just get through these first nine here, like so. And then you can see we're right back where we changed colors again. So I'm going to go into this last white one and pull up a white loop so I can keep my color changes clean there. Pull this end just down out of the way for now. And then I'm going to pull up, this is where it starts to get a little tangly, but that's okay. Pull up some gray. I'm gonna yarn over with the gray to finish that last white stitch. Then I'm ready to start crocheting in the gray. And one thing I like to do at this point and it's a little harder to see on camera, but hopefully you can see it here. This is that loop I pulled up from the previous stitch there. I like to actually enclose that in that next stitch. It just creates a really straight line. So I'm just going to go right under that tail right there before I go into that next stitch. And that's optional and totally up to you, but as I finish that stitch, you can see it just gave it a little bit straighter line right there. And you might like it better if without that, you might like to try different methods, you can use whatever color change method you think gives you the best result. So I'm just going to continue single crocheting on across the gray here until we get back to the white, and then I will do the same thing. And then we will make row three together, or at least parts of it together, because again, it's just foundation extended half double crochets, or excuse me, just extended half double crochets. We don't have to do foundation stitches anymore. So it just gets pretty darn easy from here, but I want to show you how those color changes work. So time for another one of those, speaking of. So my white yarn was just hanging out down there where I left it. So I will finish off that stitch with that. I'm gonna go back under that one again, just to enclose it, just a personal preference again. And then all the way to the end here, and this will be the end of row two, will all be in this white yarn. Now, I know you don't need to watch me single crochets, but I wanna show you what happens when I get to the end here and a good way to help keep your yarns from getting too terribly tangled. Although once in a while you'll want to start stop and uh, sort them out for sure. And that's one of the reasons too I want to point out that we do this blanket in three strips. I could have just kept going across. We could have made it whatever 36 times three is um, all the way across and just worked straight across. But that would have involved up to uh, 12 bobbins on some rows I think and that would have gotten crazy. I think everybody would go nuts if their yarn was getting that tangled with 12 different bobbins all the time. So unless you're one of those tapestry people who loves doing tapestry crochet all the time, then you've probably got your favorite methods. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off that last stitch for row two, or yes, row two. And then you can see my yarns are tangled up this way. And if I flip them back this way to work the next row, that helps start at getting them untangled. So if you normally always flip in one direction or the other when you flip your rows, try flipping one direction for one row and then back the other for the second one, or the next one I should say, and that will help untangle them at least just a little bit. Won't be perfect, you can see we've still got one little twist here, but this one is back all by itself. So just a little tip for you there. Now to begin the subsequent rows, we are going to start each row with a chain three that does not count as a stitch again. This is every one of the odd numbered rows. And this is where we go, need to go back to consult our chart too. Now, row three, pretty similar, but let me actually, before I make that stitch, make that found, excuse me, I keep trying to say foundation. Let's make an extended double crochet together. So I've chained three, that's my turning chain. I'm going to yarn over, go into that first stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through just one loop, and then we finish it like a regular double crochet. Yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. We'll do one more of those real slow together here. I'm gonna yarn over, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So that's foundation, ex or excuse me, gosh, that is extended double crochet. Got in the habit of putting a foundation in front of it and now I can't stop myself. So just work your extended double crochets across for your odd numbered rows. And once you get in the habit of making your double crochets this way, it does go a little bit faster. It takes a little bit of concentration at first to add that extra loop there at the beginning. But you can see it goes across pretty quickly. And then we will be getting to our gray again very soon. 
just a few more stitches to go. And again, if you haven't printed out the chart that's provided in the blog post, or you don't have it open in another screen, I would recommend that you do so at this time. Uh, because it really will make this pattern so much easier to follow. And I don't think I need to demonstrate all 24 rows because it really is just a row of extended double crochet followed by a row of single crochet back and forth all the way up the pattern. And if you look at the chart, it really couldn't be easier to follow. So we will get all the way across our color A stitches here. We're almost there. Got one more. So for this row of the pattern, at this point we want to work six gray stitches into our nines. So those last two are going to be white, and this is going to be a good opportunity for us to show how to do those color changes. So I'm going to go ahead and make the last white one here, and I'm going to finish it off with the gray. Again, that's waiting right here for me. If I want to take this opportunity to untangle it, boom, I can just pull that right on through. So then I'll yarn over with the gray to finish off that last white stitch. You can see this is where that really pulls up because we're pulling from the previous row. And if we go under that line here, that really helps hide it well. So for the taller stitches, if you wanna skip it with the single crochets, that's one thing, but I really do like the way that tucks it in when you make these taller stitches. So going by our chart, we've got two blocks of gray here, which means six total stitches. So with three stitches, that's our first block. We've got one, two, and then this will be the last one for this row in this color, in this section, I should say. So from here, we need to pull over the white. Now the white's all the way back over here. So this is where it can get a little bit tricky, but it's not as hard as it looks. All we're going to do is go ahead and yarn over with the white, and I want to pull it through, leaving just enough slack to be able to crochet over it. So you don't want it super loose right here. You don't want it super tight or that will start warping your blanket too. You just want it sort of just so. It's a little bit of a Goldilocks thing, but you want it to be held taut but not tight. So you've got a little bit of play there, but not too much. And this will just take a little bit of experimentation, but don't worry about it. There's definitely some, some wiggle room here. So we're gonna yarn over. I'm going to go right into the next stitch. I'm going to make sure to enclose that strand we pulled over like so and you can see not too bad we've got a nice nice little color change there and I'm just going to continue to do that all the way across then until we're ready to work some more gray stitches I want to make sure with each one of these though especially when I'm working into the gray with the white to make sure to enclose that end that I drew over and then when I get over here again to the white stitches that's a good opportunity to go ahead and enclose it one more time like so, like that, there we go. Now, row three gets a little more complicated. We're gonna have three gray stitches right at the end. So I need to keep an eye out for when we start getting close to the end of this row. And that's where I will go ahead and start using my fourth bobbin that I've made, the second one that's gray, or your second gray skein, however you wanna do it. So we're almost to the end of this row. I want to make sure I stop with three stitches left. So one, two, three. I've got one more to make. So I'm going to stop and I want to finish this one off with the gray. Now I don't want to finish it off with this gray. This gray needs to wait back here for this chunk. So time to pull in that fourth strand. Brand new, brand new cake so it's a little stiffer. There we go. So I'll take my gray. I'm going to yarn over with my gray and do the color change just as we did for the other ones. So then it's just extended double crochets in these last three stitches. And once again, I left my white end hanging out there. So we have all four bobbins attached. And that is row three. You can see it's starting to already kind of get that really graphic chunky look. So for row four, it's just like all the other even numbered rows. I want to turn and work back in single crochets. Just match the color of the previous row. So these are the, these are the Netflix rows. Make sure you pull up your new color when it's time to switch. Let me 
me untangle these just a little bit there we are and then I'm just going to catch that one again coming back the other way and work on across so I will see you at the end of row four okay so I went ahead and started row five because it's just more uh, extended double crochets until we get over to our gray section again remember this is just the same two stitches in a row so I'm gonna switch over to my gray section and if you look at our chart or the written instructions for row five you'll see that there's only one block of gray right here in this little section so that means three stitches total so I'll do my three here a little bit more yarn there and then find my next section I'm going to do the same thing again I'm going to bring this all the way over like so and then crochet right over it to work my way across there we are and then I've got it looks like another six stitches in white and then we'll be pulling over the gray here too but one thing I wanted to show you even though we're making the same stitches again you might say why do you keep going I can follow the chart well we've got our end of our gray here and we need to come back across with single crochet but after we come back across with a single crochet then we'll be able to cut this particular bobbin and we'll be able to use it um, set it aside and use it again later when we need it so I just wanted to talk a little bit about that so you can cut your bobbins after each section but don't make the mistake I did several times when I was making my first two strips for this blanket and I cut it before I made the single crochet so that's always a bummer and then you realize you need to come back and just make three more stitches with it and you've got you know that many more ends to weave in so be sure to keep that in mind before you do cut your own yarn so I know I'm going to be pulling this gray over for three more stitch stitches so it can kind of mimic this shape so I've got one two three there so that means my last one's right here and then of course I can pull up that yarn from the very last bobbin here and finish off this stitch with it so there's that one and then again I just make sure to weave over the ends or work over the end here so that it's really enclosed and we don't get a bunch of strings hanging out on our blanket so we've just got three more stitches left I just want to catch that end one more time I keep calling it an end it's not really an end it's more of a middle but it sort of acts like an end you want to enclose it to hide it away so we are on our last one there and if I look at the chart I know that this gray section is going to keep growing so I'm definitely going to be leaving this attached even after I've made my single crochets for a while but I want to keep an eye out on that next section and that's going to make it so you can cut one of your um, white bobbins as well because you'll be able to work straight across for the next row so I'll demonstrate that a little bit when we get there because I just really want to go through all the trouble spots that might cause you any sort of trouble in this pattern even though the stitches themselves are relatively simple working them back and forth and moving the yarns around like this tapestry style can get just a little bit confusing so we're almost to our middle gray section here and of course I want to make sure that these stitches match those color wise so I'll finish that last one off with the gray and go ahead and catch that when I make my three gray single crochets here and then whoops bobbin overboard there we go all right <laughs> finish that one off with the white and I'll make a couple of these stitches here just to get this yarn secured in and then at this point because these bobbins are starting to get a little crazy and tangled it's a good chance to go ahead and cut I had to find my scissors there and cut the yarn because I know that this gray section is done and I've made those single crochets I can go ahead and cut it I'm just going to leave a good six to eight inches so I can weave that in so I can weave that in when it's done so I will go ahead and set that end out of the way so it doesn't get any more tangles in it there and then I will just continue single crocheting on across now let's go ahead and do a little thinking about the next row the next row of course we're going to start with the white again our color a and it'll be the extended double crochets 
but when we get back to this point, when we come back across, we don't need any more gray there, so we're just going to continue working with this yarn right here. We'll work all the way across. That means that right now, as of right now, this bobbin right here is also done because we can use this one to come back all the way across. We can cut this one as well. So again, just make sure you leave another six to eight inches or so to weave it in later. And you can set that one aside for now too. So that makes it a little bit easier as you go. Now, the only other thing I think I haven't covered is there is a couple places where uh, rather than say working, pulling a yarn over to the side and then needing to work over that end, you'll need to delay it. You'll want to say, leave this one attached, but maybe not use it until you're over here. In which case you can just work over that working end until you're ready to pull it up and use it again. And that's the only other real move that you need to make in this blanket. So that's the basic stitch pattern and how it works together. Let's take a look at one of the strips that's finished and we can talk a little bit more about the repeat. Okay, so here we have one of the finished strips for the Houndstooth Squares blanket. You can see we've got the first few rows that we work together right here and then it just continues from there. Each one of the squares in the chart represents, actually a little easier to see on the gray here, represents three of the extended double crochets and the three single crochets worked into it. That creates a nice, really square shape. So you can see as it goes on up, eventually we'll bring in that next gray, that gray bobbin that we cut. We'll come back in on this side. We've got a nice big chunk of gray here. And then this row right here see if I can hide that a little better, is actually the top of our chart. So our chart just goes from there up to there. That's our 24 rows. But to make each of the strips, you're going to work the chart three times. So let me pull this back up now that I've got it in my lap a little bit here. You can see after that first one, that's the start again. That's our row one right there. Of course, for this row one, we don't need to make foundation stitches. We just work our regular extended double crochets right into row 24. So we just start it over again, same thing. And then there's that last row of the second block. And then we begin the third block and then finish that off just as we normally would with a row of single crochet there at the end. And then you'll have these three long strips that when you put them together form the great houndstooth pattern. So up next, I'll show you how to sew the strips together. Okay, so now we're ready to put our houndstooth squares blanket strips together. For this section, you can put aside your crochet hook. You'll need a pair of scissors and a tapestry needle. This happens to be one of the bigger ones I've got, and you'll want to make sure that yours too has a nice big head in it for the chunky yarn. So once you've got your strips made, like I said, it's time to sew them together. And here I have two strips already sewn together. You can see right here. If you remember our stitch pattern, you can see this is where it would have split. So I've just sewn them together right up the seam. And for the most part, I used white yarn and you can see it disappeared really well. The only time I stopped using the white yarn and used the gray was right here where the grays matched. Otherwise, I just went ahead and used the white, whether I was matching white to gray or just white to white. And that made it go pretty darn quick. Now for this sewing portion, you could use either the mattress stitch or the whip stitch to seam them together. I used the mattress stitch. So let me show you how that's done. Okay, so the first thing you do to start seaming is make sure you've got them lined up the right way. Make sure, check your charts, make sure they're both heading the same direction and facing the same way. You don't want to sew them together the wrong way. So when you begin at the bottom edge, you can just match up each row. And if you'd like, you can use something like stitch markers or clips or something like that to pinch them together to make it a little bit easier. But since there's the same number of rows, as long as you match each section as you sew it, they should match together perfectly all the way through to the end. Again, you could use whip stitch or mattress stitch. I just use mattress stitch because it disappears so well. So I'm going to demo that for you here today, but I'm going to be using a contrasting colored yarn just to make it a little bit easier to see. When I showed you earlier my one finished seam, you saw how it just disappeared. So if I did it that way, you wouldn't be able to see it at all. So let's go ahead and do it with a blue yarn so it's a little bit easier to see. All right, so to begin the mattress stitch, I'm going to hold my two edges side by side here just to make sure that I know exactly where I'm working. And then I like to start with one side and I put my needle from the back to the front, just right at the base of that first row. And I'm going to pull this through and I'm going to leave a good six to eight inches at the end here because I don't want to accidentally pull that all the way through and undo my stitching. Anybody who's sewn, you know what I'm talking about. So leave a good end there so you don't end up pulling it all the way through. Then I'm going to pick up my other piece 
and I'm going to come from the back to the front in approximately, as much as I can anyway, the same spot. So I'm just come back to the front, right up through that one. And I'll just kind of keep that one a little loose for now because like I say, I don't want to accidentally pull my end out. Then I'm going to come back to the one on the other side. Let me get them held a little steadier here there. And I'm just going to pick a spot that looks like a good spot for a next stitch. About halfway up this double crochet seems good. So back to front again. I will pull that through. Then I'm going to find the same spot on the other side. So sometimes you'll be working in double crochets, sometimes you'll be, oops, working in um, chain threes, just depends on how you've worked the pattern. But I, or excuse me, for this one's um, extended double crochets. So again, just depends where you want to put your stitches. But I wanna show you that I made a mistake here. When I pulled that yarn through, you can see if I pulled it through right now, there'd be that line here. If you get that, it happens all the time. Just send your needle right back through there. Boom, and that'll pull out nice and smooth. So we just keep doing that back and forth. And like I said, I didn't find it necessary to clip these pieces together because I was able to just match up the stitches. So I knew if I was in the middle of an extended uh, uh, double crochet, that to work into that part of the extended double crochet. If I'm working into the one of single crochet rows, match it up with a single crochet row, just back and forth. I actually went a little high with that last one. And again, you can just pull it out if you find you went into the wrong spot. Just pull your stitches out, pull just the stitches out you messed up and start again. It's not the end of the world. You can see it's a little loose here, but I've been going a little while. It's time to pull my stitches a little tighter. So if I pull from that end, that'll tighten up that end. And if I pull from that end, that'll tighten up that one. If you've got one in the middle there, it doesn't want to tighten it up, you can just use your needle, pull up on that yarn right there, like so. You can see, even though this was in a contrasting yarn, I hope you can see how it's already hiding quite a bit. Of course, if that were in white, I don't think you'd be able to pick that out at all. But that really is all there is to the mattress stitch. Just go from the back to the front on one side, and then from the back to the front on the other, back and forth all the way up. Like I said, I used white anytime I had, well, I've obviously white yarn on both sides or white and gray, so I didn't have to cut my yarn as much. And then anytime I just got to the two gray sections, I switched over to the gray for that. So then of course, when you get to the end of that, you just weave in those ends and your blanket is all ready for the border. So after you've sewn all your strips together, it's time to add some borders. I went ahead and added two rounds of edging to my blanket. For the first round, I just worked single crochet evenly all the way around the blanket, and I made sure that these stitches, just like before with our single crochet rows, made sure the color matched. And that gave me a really nice finished edge for the second round. One note about working this first round, I found it worked best for me in terms of gauge and just getting the blanket to lay really nicely if I worked one single crochet in the side of each single crochet row, and then I would mix it up. I would do three, well, it looks like there's two in this one. So it would be three stitches in the side of one of the extended double crochet rows and then two in the next. So three in the one after that, two in the next, three, two, back and forth. Again, just working one single crochet in the side of each of the single crochet rows. And I found that gave me a really nice straight edge. So after I worked that round, I went ahead and finished that off. And another little tip for that first round, since you're going to have to come back in and join anyway, uh, since you've sewn all your strips together, the yarn won't be connected anymore. I liked to start that first round of edging uh, in a white section right, um, right after a gray section, because then when I finished off working my way around for that first round, I had the gray attached and I was able to just chain one and start that second round. So just a little bit more about that first round. When I did the corners, I would work into the side of the row and then chain two, and then of course work back around the other side or down the other side as I went around the blanket. So that's what I did for round two of the border as well. You can see I did round two all in my darker color, my color B, and I worked it into the back loop only. If you're not familiar with front loop only, back loop only, it's always relative to the crocheter. So if we look at this last row right here, and get it in, get it in good focus here so you can see it. The, fr uh, the front loop, is the loop closest to me or you as the crocheter, and the back loop is the loop furthest away. So when you work in the back loop only, you just go under that loop that's furthest away from you. And it's always relative to the crocheter. So when I turn this around, they switch. This one becomes the back loop and that's the front loop. So that's something to keep in mind too. So when I work that second 
row around. I worked it in the back loop only to give me a really nice clean edge for that border. And then again in the corner, I just did a single crochet, chain two, single crochet. And I like that one. It gives a nice little straight, nice sharp corner to the blanket itself. So here we can take a look at the finished blanket. You can see how the, those graphic pixels all came together to make the beautiful houndstooth pattern. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that you like the blanket. If you do, please give us a like and let us know what you think in the comments and be sure to subscribe to the Moogly Blog YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.